Aloha. Thank you for joining us here at TruthMadeEasy.com as we continue with our Apologetics Made Easy video training course. The title for this video is Discovering the One True Religion. As we've seen in our last two videos, there are some significant differences between the religions. So, how do we go about identifying the one true religion or worldview? We do so through careful investigation. Just as the astronomer explores and the scientist researches, just as the forensic detective pieces together evidence, so we, through science, evidence, logic, and philosophy, will carefully investigate the evidence, compare what atheism, pantheism, and theism teach, and determine at the end which religion is the one true religion. In fact, once we've completed our investigation of just point one and proven that God does indeed exist, one group is immediately eliminated from the three main groups of religions and worldviews. Which group would that be? That would be atheism. Why? Because atheism teaches that there is no God. In our study of God's existence, we will discover certain characteristics of God. One important characteristic is that God exists outside or beyond the universe. He created the universe, but he is not part of the universe as pantheism teaches. God is not the stars, or the trees, or the ocean, and so on. God made all those things. God made the universe, but God is not the universe. He is outside the universe. Since this God is not the universe, but is beyond the universe, those religions that teach that God is the universe, pantheistic religions, well, they're all removed from the list. So, by determining just two things, one, that God exists, and two, that he is outside the universe, both atheism and pantheism are removed from the list. So we are then left with just one group, the theistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. As we continue our investigation in future videos, we will determine that of these three remaining religions, that Christianity is the one true religion. Let me give you a capsule summary of how we'll come to that conclusion using our five-point hand illustration. We'll begin with point one, God exists. Using science, evidence, logic, and philosophy, we will discover that God exists, and not just a God or some impersonal force, or as some believe, God is the ocean, God is a tree, God is the sand, God is you, God is me, or some God within. No, this is a personal, infinite God who is timeless, immaterial, and non-spatial. A supernatural being who is unimaginably powerful, supremely intelligent, and absolutely morally perfect. From there, we'll move to point two, miracles. Since God exists, miracles are possible. Since a supernatural being exists, we can expect him to perform supernatural acts, what we would call miracles. And not only are miracles possible, the greatest miracle has already occurred, the creation of the universe out of nothing. Now, if God can create everything from nothing, it's no big thing for him to perform the supernatural acts found in the Bible, like the parting of the Red Sea, sending manna from heaven, keeping Jonah alive in the belly of a whale for three days, tumbling the walls of Jericho, healing the sick, and raising the dead, to name a few. Now, there are many who claim to have messages from God. One of the ways that God helps us to know which messages really came from him is miracles. God can use miracles to confirm a true message from him and confirm his true messengers, messengers like Moses, Elijah, Elisha, Jesus, the apostles, and others. Next is point three, the New Testament. Here we'll discover that the New Testament is historically reliable. Simplified, it's a good history book. And not only is it a good history book, it is the very best book from antiquity. If we throw away the New Testament, we must throw away all other ancient books. Why? Because the New Testament we have today has more manuscripts, earlier manuscripts, and more accurately copied manuscripts than any document from the ancient world. It also has more authors and more contemporary eyewitnesses than any ancient work. Conclusion, the New Testament history book is reliable and trustworthy. We can believe what it tells us. Our next point, point four, is Jesus is God. The reliable and trustworthy New Testament tells us that Jesus Christ claimed to be God, and he did so in nine different ways, including the claim that he was the great I Am, the Yahweh of the Old Testament, the one who could forgive sins, and so on. 
And not only did Jesus claim to be God, but he also proved he was God in a number of ways. By predicting and accomplishing his own resurrection from the dead. By fulfilling many Old Testament prophecies written hundreds of years before his birth. Prophecies that described in detail when he would be born, where he would be born, and what he would do as well as prophecies regarding his crucifixion and resurrection. Jesus also proved he was God by living a perfect and sinless life, something that no one else has ever done. Lastly, Jesus proved he was God by performing supernatural miracles, turning water into wine, feeding 5,000 people with five loaves and two fishes, healing those with diseases, opening blind eyes, making crippled people walk, raising the dead, walking on water, accurately predicting the future, ascending bodily into heaven, as well as many other supernatural acts. From this, we will see that Jesus not only claimed to be God, but he also proved he was God. We then move to our last point, point five. The Bible is the Word of God. We know that whatever God teaches is true. What did Jesus, who was God, teach? Well, he taught that the Bible, both the Old and New Testament, is the Word of God. Jesus taught that the scriptures are true, that they are without error, they are eternal and infallible, God's message to mankind. Therefore, the Bible is the word of God, and whatever it teaches is true. So, our overall conclusion, looking at our five-point hand illustration here is, one, God exists. Two, miracles are possible. Three, the New Testament is a good history book. Four, Jesus is God. And five, the Bible is the true word of God. Based on all this, we will conclude that Christianity is the one true religion. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have yet to prove any of these points. That's what we'll be doing during the remainder of this course. Now, once we have proved that Christianity is the one true religion and proved that each of these points is true, we would place it on what side of our truth and taste lie. It would go on the side of truth. And just as 1 plus 1 equals 2 and the earth is round is true for everyone, Christianity would be the one true religion for everyone. And the Bible would be the one true word of God, the true scriptures for everyone. Now, you'll also remember in our studies of truth that the opposite of true is false. Well, if Christianity and the Bible can be proved to be true, then any teaching that differs is opposite of the Bible would be false. Does that mean that everything taught by other religions and worldviews is false? No, not at all. Again, it just means that any teaching that differs from the Bible is false. Let's look at some examples. Going back to an earlier slide, we saw that atheism teaches that there is no God. The Bible teaches that there is a God. If Christianity is proved to be true, then atheism would be false. Here's another. Islam teaches that Jesus never died. Christianity teaches that Jesus died and rose from the dead. If Christianity is proved to be true, then Islam would be false. One last example. Pluralism teaches that there are many ways to God. Christianity teaches that there is only one way to God. Jesus himself made this statement, No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14.6 If Christianity is proved to be true, then pluralism would be false. Now, what else did Jesus have to say on the subject of truth? Well, we'll find out in our next video, what did Jesus have to say about truth?